Hello everyone, my name is Ollie the Rock Doc, your medically qualified guitar instructor, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now we've just had Christmas and the New Year, and that means that there's going to be lots of people all around the world with lots of new guitars, which is an awesome time of year. But as with any tool, we need to understand our instruments and treat them with care. And just as applies with people, knowing the anatomy of your instrument and the parts that make it up goes a really long way towards having a better relationship with them. So in this video we're going to take a look at the anatomy of an electric guitar, having a look at all the common components and talking about some of the variations that you might see. And this isn't meant to be exhaustive at all, there are lots and lots of different types of guitars out there, but the aim is to familiarise you with the key components, the ones that you will see on most guitars, and talking about what each part ultimately does. So let's start here with the body the big bulky bit that makes up the majority of the guitar. The body is the element, the part that holds everything together, the central part to which everything else is attached, the skeleton almost. Now guitar bodies are most commonly made of a wood, usually something like older mahogany or ash, and the wood that a guitar's body is made of does have a significant influence on the sound, and different manufacturers tend to prefer different types of woods characteristically for their guitar bodies. But there are some makers out there doing really crazy things with different materials, so guitars made of metal, plastic, rubber, and other materials do exist. Now the next most obvious component here is the neck, the bit that we hold with our non-dominant hand, and really the bit where the strings go. Now guitar necks can either be glued or bolted onto the body that we've already talked about on my Stratocaster here, you can see the four big screws that hold the neck tightly to the body. And if I were to take a screwdriver and undo these screws, the neck and the body would come apart. Now the front part of the neck here is called the fretboard, and most typically the fretboard is going to be made of either maple wood or rosewood. And it's called the fretboard because it's where the frets, these little metal strips, live. And these are metal bars inserted into the neck at regular intervals. And it's by pressing the strings down on these frets and plucking the string that we produce a note. Most fretboards have position markers, you can see here these small black dots embedded into the fretboard, usually with a double marker or a different marker of some sort at the 12th fret. Coming up to the top of the neck now, the strings will all end up ultimately coming through this piece here, which is called the nut, which lives at the very end of the neck. This is a thin piece of plastic, bone, or some other composite material, and its job is to ensure that all of the strings align properly and are kept in the appropriate tension as they run towards the tuners, these metal pieces up here. And the tuners tighten or loosen the strings, which is how we alter the note that each string makes when it's played without being held down. And for a guitar to be in tune, we rely on all of the strings being the appropriate tightness for the note that we want that string to make. Now this wooden conformation here at the very end of the neck is usually characteristic between different guitar brands, each usually has their own, so this shape is very typical for a Stratocaster. And usually you will see a brand logo present somewhere on the headstock, in this case this is a Fender Stratocaster, and we can see the Fender Guitar Company logo. Now I just want to point out that in this general area you may also have a serial number present on the guitar, it may be elsewhere on the guitar, it's actually on the back of the neck in this particular model. But the vast, vast majority of guitars have a unique serial number printed on them somewhere, which is really important for tracking the lineage and the production of different instruments. And if you ever want to resell your guitar later on, as many people do, make sure if you're buying or selling something that that serial number has not been interfered with. If you're ever going to buy a guitar, for example, and you see that the serial number is either not present anywhere or has been obviously scratched off or obscured, do not buy that instrument. It's more than likely a fake or even potentially stolen goods, and that's not something you want to be involved with. Lastly, before we move on, you can see this dark brown area here. This is the opening for the truss rod slot. And the truss rod is essentially a metal bar that travels up and down the length of the neck. It lives inside the neck, and its job is to keep the neck straight over time because wood is an organic porous material. It changes its shape in response to humidity, temperature, other environmental factors, and that can cause the wood to subtly change shape over time. The truss rod lives inside the neck and helps keep it straight. And again, on many guitars, like mine here, you can see 
this darker brown stripe here. This is called the skunk stripe and it's a piece of wood that's been glued in over the top of the slot where the truss rod was inserted when the guitar was being made. Returning to the body then, the next interesting thing to talk about is the pickups. And these again vary enormously, they're very characteristic of different types of guitar, but these are essentially a series of magnetic coils that are responsible for turning vibrations into the metal strings, so we make them vibrate when we pluck or pick them. The pickups turn those vibrations into an electrical signal, which is then sent to our amplifier, our recording device, to make it so that we can hear the sound. Most Stratocaster type guitars like this one have three what we call single coil pickups, these single rail wide pickup assemblies, whereas Les Paul type guitars like this one in my left hand have two what we call humbucker pickups. And you can't actually see in this Les Paul because it's got its pickups covered up, but these pickups have two coils next to each other, one wound in one direction and one wound in the other direction, essentially to cancel out interference or buck the hum. And of course we have to have somewhere to plug in a cable to send that signal out to our amplifier, and we have an output jack somewhere on the body of the guitar to facilitate that. On this Stratocaster it's usually on the front, on Les Paul type guitars it's usually on the side where you can't see it. Then down here towards the bottom of the body we have our pickup selector switch. As the name suggests it selects which pickup the guitar is currently outputting to our amplifier. On this particular model if I move it closer to my head it selects the neck pickup, the one that lives closer to the neck. If I move it all the way to the bottom far away from me it selects the furthest away pickup, we call this the bridge pickup. And of course we could put it in the middle to select our middle pickup, or this is a five-way switch so I can actually put it to in-between positions where I can have these two coils, these two pickups active, or indeed in position four, I've got both the middle and the bridge pickups active. Different pickups have different sounds innately depending on how they are made and how they are positioned on the body also affects the sound. Typically your pickups closer to the neck will be more bassy, perhaps a bit more muddy, and towards the bridge classically are usually a bit more bitey, treble heavy. We also have our volume and tone knobs which kind of do what they suggest. So the volume control here we have a master volume control on this guitar. Simply turning down the volume lowers the output from the pickups, it turns the volume down. If I turn it all the way back up, that brings the volume back up. That one's quite easy to understand. The tone knobs are a little bit more complicated, but the simple way to think about what they do is they are essentially adding treble, those more bitey, harsh, high frequencies the more tone you have. If you turn your tone all the way down to zero, we're cutting away a lot of those high frequencies so you'll get something that is a lot more bassy, a lot smoother, but also might get lost in the mix a little bit as a result because it's all just low end. If we turn the tone all the way back up, we're getting all of those more trebly, biting, harsh frequencies back. And this is all about finding a balance and a sound that works for you. For most people it's going to be somewhere in the middle. You want something that is powerful and cutting enough to be heard and to cut through the mix, but not so much that it's cutting and biting into people's ears when they hear it. You want something that's tolerable, but still audible. And then finally the last piece to talk about is the bridge. Just as the strings all ran to the nut up at the top end of the neck, down here the strings will ultimately wind up here, coming down into the bridge, the metal piece at the bottom to which the strings are secured. And on my Les Paul here, this is pretty unremarkable. It is a fixed, solid piece of metal that the strings simply run into, and nothing much happens. This is very, very secure, and it will help keep the strings from moving and keep them in tune. If instead we come back to my Stratocaster here, you can see it's a little bit more complicated because while the strings are doing the same thing and coming down through a metal piece in the body, it looks slightly different and it's got this piece of metal coming out of it. The reason it looks different is that this assembly incorporates a tremolo, or it is a tremolo, and what this allows us to do is raise and lower the pitch of the strings by altering the height of this metal piece. The way we do that is with this piece which is called a tremolo arm or a whammy bar as people often refer to it and you can hear how that sounds.
makes a whammy noise. And you can actually see here on the back the springs that are attached to this tremolo and allow it to float up and down without coming unsecured from the body. So it's a complicated piece of machinery. But there you are guys, I hope you found that useful. That is a whistle stop tour of the anatomy of your electric guitar. We'll talk about acoustic guitars and their anatomy in another video, but I hope that's useful as an introduction and I hope you've taken something useful from it. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. I am revitalizing this channel after more than five years of not posting here. Med school takes a long time, but it's lovely to be back. Take care and I'll see you soon.